Hey, how y'all doing on today? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wait, I know I always come on a little bit early to give people a chance to clear the kids out the room if you're at home or put the earbuds in if you're in your office or the boss can't hear our shenanigans. Yes. <laughs> hey, Brandon, that's super K, y'all. Brandon, how you doing? But Brandon, I know you better have a lot to say today. <laughs> that's what I'm going to say. You know why I'm saying that, Brandon. Woo. But I just want to say, first of all, hey to Brandon, Tasha Banks. Tasha, don't you go nowhere. Just in case Dawn can't come up here, Tasha, make sure you hear everything. Hey, Mama DeBarge, girl, you can really put some wisdom on this. Yes. How you doing, Mama DeBarge? Is everything doing all right? Hit me up. Give me a thumbs up if you're feeling all right. All right. Hey, Sonia. Sonia, you know you need to stay up here and comment. Yes, Sonia, because I read something I did not know about this topic, Sonia, and it involves you. Yes, that's why Herbert tagged you so you could be on here. Hey, Shanique, is it? Oh, hey, Shanique and Timmy Allen, all of you guys. And let me tell you, house rules as usual, we don't disrespect anyone in this house. Every opinion counts. Every experience is heard. And listen to because we come from various backgrounds, various situations, and a whole lot of bag of child. Like I always say, we all need therapy, and this is where you get it. Yes, but I, I need to address this in a raw fashion, you know, because see, a lot of times and things like that can't say what we can say here on YouTube. So we can get really raw and real with this. Yeah, you don't trust me, so it's my OMG. Hey, Otis, how you doing? Nadine, hello, hello, hello. You know, I come on five minutes early, guys, so I can have a chance to say hi to everybody. Because sometimes it gets so good and we get to yapping and bumping our gums and laughing and, and mm, that I don't get a chance to say hi to all my loves, my baby loves. But yeah, y'all, as, as you guys can see, I'm wrapped up like a clown. <clears throat> on Tuesday because it's cold here in Virginia. It's cold. <laughs> it's even cold in the house. Um, hey, how y'all doing? So I'm a stickler for being on time. That's why I used to try to come on here like five minutes early to say, hey, y'all, how you doing? And plus, I have some awesome, awesome, awesome uh, news later on in the weeks. I have a meeting tonight. And I plan on being a blessing to anybody who has been a blessing to me. Yes. So uh, stay tuned for that news. And I am doing fine, fine, fine. You guys, all right. I got two minutes. I'm going to get somebody like two minutes to come over here. No, I got time today because, yes, where I'm usually running off to, I don't have to run off to today. So if we go slightly over... It's going to be all right today because I'm not running and jumping in the car and breaking the speed limit to get where I need to get. All right. So I want to get all the preliminaries out of the way. You guys can say whatever you want, however you want to, long as we be respectful to one another. That's it. But over here, we talk about real stuff for real people. All that celebrity news and bloggers and all that. I ain't hating. They making their money. They doing their thing. But I like to deal with the real people because ain't nobody dealing with us, man, giving me what we need. And let me tell you, I've always told you, I am not a shrink, a counselor, or a professional. I'm up here getting therapy with you all. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. We all need therapy, child. So, uh-oh, we got one minute before 4 o'clock. I'm just going to go ahead and jump in. Welcome. Welcome to the Less D experience. And what the experience is, <laughs> we're getting therapy. <laughs> Yes. So today's topic is, is a soulmate a real thing? Is it really such thing as before you was formed in the womb that there was a particular person, another soul made just for you? Now, people get all up in arms about this situation. Hey, Morris and everything else, but I came prepared. And I'm gonna tell you what Google says a soulmate is and the 18 signs to see if you really found 
your soulmate. We're going to get the technical stuff out the way first. So I got my handy dandy cell phone. <laughs> all right. It says, <clears throat> first of all, they're speaking from a spiritual uh, aspect. Okay. I know everybody not spiritual, but this is what I found. Hey, Dawn, stay up here, Dawn. Yes. And I really want Dawn to, I keep calling you Dawn. I'm so sorry, baby. Valerie Jennings, Pastor Valerie Adams. <laughs> I really want her to jump in. Hey, Karen and Angela. And this is what, this is what it, it, it says. I, I'm just reading it. Okay. It said, spiritually speaking, it is said that even before you were born, the name of your spiritual half has been determined. Each soul has a perfect match. Your soulmate. Well, now, um, I'll just keep, I'm going to jump down to, and what another source says, the definition of a soulmate is a person ideally suited. Those two words are very important. A person who is ideally suited to another as a close friend or romantic partner. Now the friend thing was new to me. I was like, I never equated a soulmate to a friend, which opened up a whole new thinking for me. You know what I'm saying? But we're gonna let you guys jump in. Hey, Judy and Charles, um, because, hey, Ty. Oh, Ty. Yes, Ty. And you guys just start commenting, just rolling away. And what we don't cover, just continue to put it in the comments and we'll get it done. All right. Now, let me tell y'all something. Before we get into, you know, is a soulmate real, a blah, 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 is a soulmate a real thing? And whether or not you believe in it or have felt it or experienced it, experienced it or is with your soulmate at this time. As I tell y'all, a lot of people send me a whole bunch of stuff. Yes, I choose which one I want to talk about, but they send a lot of stuff. And somebody sent me a little clip of something was going on at the red table with Jada and Will and all that stuff or whatever. Uh, but it was like, I looked at it and I'm like, okay, they just skated over it. But then the person who sent me that sent me their situation and asked me to answer their question. I'm like, I ain't answering that. I ain't, no. So I was like, okay, I'll let y'all answer it. Yes. I threw y'all under the bus. Y'all going to answer it. Now here's the situation. Okay, no, I'm going to turn it around. And, and you, person, you don't have to reveal who you are. I never reveal anybody unless you get up on it and say, it was me, it was me, and continue it. But let's don't tell people's business, okay? But I'll pose it this way. I'm not going to give you their question, but let me ask you guys this. If you are married to a person you guys have built together, you have children together, you know, nothing's perfect because it's two individuals trying to become as one person. So nothing's perfect. You are married and you think you've met your soulmate. They are married. <laughs> and they've done the same thing that you have. They have met a person and they have built, they have children and so on and so forth. By some, I want to say fluke for now, you guys meet and you both feel like, oh my God, I've met my soulmate. If that's a thing, we haven't determined that yet on here, y'all. I'm just putting out <clears throat> what was put to me. What does one do? I'm not talking about no raggedy people, ratchet people or anything like that. Just go humping away. These people are respectful. They have a wonderful moral compass. And they are happy. They were happy with their separate mates but now they have met what they call their soulmate what do they do mm -hmm. you want to join in no <laughs> oh okay i'm sorry it's a whole thing going on behind the scenes here it's orange it's an orange thing in there <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, what do they do? What do Corey, Eric, Kashawn, L, Mousy, what do they do? They're not the type of people to go humping and bumping around or sending this or that or whatever else, but 
for some reason, they feel very strongly that, oh my God, this is who I was meant to be with forever and ever. I married the wrong person. I, I was not touching that. Um, I'll give my opinions after I see what y'all got to say. Really, Kushan, okay, the Black King is here. Hey, Black King, how you doing? <laughs> Kushan, what you missed is I'm asking people, is a soulmate a real thing? And the situation that was posed to me in my DMs was is if two individuals are married with separate families with a moral compass and very respectful people and they meet their soulmate, what do they do with that? What? What? Okay, Valerie is saying, nope, nope, nope. If you committed to someone else, sorry, not sorry. Oh, 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 y'all hear that? Valerie. <laughs> oh, well, is anybody going to respond to Ms. Valerie? Adam's on here. She said, okay, you committed to that person already. You didn't build. You have a family, whatever else. In other words, like Luther say, love the one you went. <laughs> I, look, Valerie said it. Valerie said it. Um, I'll give my two cents at the end of the show. You know, well, Valerie, let me ask you this. Do you believe in a soulmate situation? Do you think Fred is your soulmate? Huh? Valerie, you Valerie, you trying to say they try to justify creeping? I mean, but I, yeah, that's sometimes, yeah, people do do that. But in a genuine case, Valerie, and that happens, what should they do? If anything, and you say to stay committed to the one, because Sean is saying, oh, Ty is saying he'd have to agree with Pastor Adams. And Kashan is saying, oh, I see. They have to pass that up because they have something established already. Okay. Wow. Uh, Valerie, can you answer that? Hey, Papa. Y'all, my pops is on here. David Modlin. Hey, Papa, how you doing? Hey, Jack Bass. <laughs> um, uh, Y'all, and somebody answer uh, Kashan's question. He was saying, okay, just because you've established something with somebody and you met your soulmate later, you have to give that up because you committed to them? That's Kashawn's question to Valerie's answer. Okay, y'all keep it coming. I'm saving mine for at the end. Uh, and it looks like I might have to have a part two on this. Because let me say some while you guys are typing and I see bubbles moving frantically. Um, in this day in technology, especially with social media, Instagram and Facebook, um, people have more access to individuals in other states, other countries, onto other continents, and things like that. Uh, oh, wait, wait, wait! And it's and, and it's and it's easier to meet and get to know someone on a spiritual, emotional, intellectual level. Not even physical, because you're in different um, time zones, different states, and different everything else. So you get to know the individual in these days with Facebook um, and all social media outlets. But um, Brandon is saying, hold, oh, go. I'm trying to get everybody. <laughs> okay, Sonia Bird is asking, what is the relationship with the separated spouses, with the separate spouses, I'm sorry, that they're with? Now, the one who contacted me, Sonia, uh, that person is not happy at all and was about to leave, but something happened, and now they feel obligated to stay. You know what I'm saying? But they feel that, you know, for years, it's been pulling teeth for communication. It's been, um, it's just crazy. So they feel like now they just settled with that. And was just like, okay, I've been together with for so many years. Um, I'll just deal with it. But they've said now that they feel like they've met their soulmate, and now they don't want to be unhappy anymore. They don't want to um, not be getting sex anymore. They don't want to be arguing and fighting anymore. They don't want to be doing that in them anymore because they have met their soulmate and have never been in physical.
contact with their this person that they think is a soulmate. They've just been talking to them, you know, via social media or, you know, emailing or whatever people do and things like that. So that's the answer to your question, Sonia. Okay, Keyshawn is saying, it's many a soulmates out here, and soulmate to me means just two souls that are strong match towards each other, and it's plenty of souls that can have a strong connection. And Valerie is saying, can you guys hear me? I hope you can hear me, um, because my internet is flickering out in my neighborhood. We've just been having some issues, but they want their money on time. I digress. But um, Valerie says, I do feel Fred is my soulmate. Now, keep in mind, I am going off biblical stance. Fred found me. Uh-huh. Fred, her, I'm sorry, for y'all don't know, Fred is her current, her current. Fred is her husband. <laughs> and when you are with the person designed you, designed for you, I think you can call it soulmate. That's what Valerie is saying. And Krishan said, oh, no, I was saying in my first comment that I see. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Krishan. I misquoted him, guys. He says, I was just giving, an, um, giving my answer saying that they have to commit to that relationship they have established. I'm sorry, Quashon, it was agreeing with you, Valerie. Um, and Otis is saying, we live in a world, in a universe where anything, all caps, is possible. And to me, that means that it's very, all caps, possible to find one that would be called a soulmate. In the situation that you just described, if that soulmate is found and you're married, it's time to really examine things. That's what he says. Valerie is saying, when you're already not happy, anyone giving you attention you lack will be called a soulmate. Whoop, whoops, whoops. That is so true. That's why I took the time, guys. Why am I not online anymore? Um, can you guys hear me? Because my phone says I'm offline. Anyway, I'll try to get the um the thing back up here. But um, that is so true. You have that's why I really want to talk about this because we do have access to so much technology and so many different people we didn't have access to 20 years ago. Um, and you're discussing things and you're talking to people, whatever. And then if you're already in an unhappy situation, you are very vulnerable. You are very, very vulnerable. And also, you don't know nobody till you live with them. Now, when you're talking to somebody on social media, they only see the best you. I heard somebody say, people don't meet you when they first meet you. They meet your representative. <laughs> they don't meet the one with the attitude, the whatever else, this and that. They're talking to their rel I mean, relative, their representative. So um, hold on. Let me, let me go back up. You guys are going so fast. Okay, Val said what I was typing exactly. <laughs> hey, Rick Lamar, how you doing, hon? Um, Otis says, I can hear you. Thanks, Otis, for that. It's just my phone just jacked up because I was going to give you the 18 ways that Google is saying you found your soulmate. Some of those, these things I raised an eyebrow at. Um, Kashawn is saying Valerie has great points. Valerie. And... Um, Shanique McLean said, honestly, life is too short to just settle with good enough. Everyone deserves to be happy. If that person is unhappy, his or her spouse is unhappy also. Letting go is the best thing. Hmm. And Otis is saying, um, Shanique, that he agrees with you wholeheartedly. Jack is saying, um, you will find your soulmate if you are willing to give your heart. And so many times we're not willing to give our hearts also be when we initially meet people, period, um, to marry these so-called people that you're already with. Um, some people marry just because of loneliness. Um, some people marry because of financial situation. It's a business deal, you know? And some people just are so hurt and wounded because of past relationships with family members or other um, mates or friends or whatever else that they're just so hungry for attention, companionship, love, all that encompasses and comes with um, a marriage that they hop and say yes if you're a woman or if you're a guy, you propose really quickly, not really stepping back for a moment and analyzing that thing, actually writing out the pros and the cons on a piece of paper. You know, have you saw that person when they were sick? Do you have you seen any red flags on how they spend their money? 
would they go buy a pair of Jordans instead of pay their light bill when you're dating? That's a red flag. <laughs> so a lot of times people ignore the red flag out of different reasons. And then they trips on down to the altar, you know, and you're married. And then because you're committed, because you have a, a person with a moral compass, you build on that, you stay with that, you settle for not being compatible in sex, not being compatible um, in views and goals. One person wants to build, one person wants to sit back and eat chips and watch you build. Some people don't want to build at all. And you don't find all of that until maybe in the first year or that honeymoon stage, then you marry, you're stuck. Well, people are saying you're stuck. And so let me, oh my God, you guys are going so fast. I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, Rick is saying, okay. Okay, Rick is saying life is about relationships. Now we have relationships with family, careers, religions, and et cetera. And Rick, I was going to touch bases on that. That's why I wanted Sonia. I was so glad that Sonia chimed in because Sonia has been my friend. Correct me if I was wrong, Sonia, since I was 12 or 13. I'm almost 50. And so I've known Sonia a great majority of my life. And there have been years that's gone by and we have not spoken because of my location or sickness or losing touch or whatever. But when we came back together, it was just like we never left. You know, so there can be soulmates in friendship, guys, as well. That's my opinion. You know, that's why I read the uh, the second definition of soulmate and I underlined friend. I'm like, wow, it never occurred to me that a friend that can be a soulmate in friendship with you. You know what I'm saying? Can't nobody say that I've told anything about Sonia. And we was up to some shenanigans. <laughs> if I would have died before we have um, got caught back up with one another, I would have taken all of her secrets or all the stuff we did to my grave. Because when I'm a friend to you, I'm a friend to you. If I get upset with someone or mad at someone, I don't throw their mess in their face. I don't drag them. I don't tell the new friend nothing. I don't tell my family nothing, nothing. Because that's the type of friend I am. Now, I wish I would get it reciprocated sometimes, but you know. <laughs> but that's the type of friend I am. So I really feel like when it comes to friendship, Sonia Bird and I are soulmates and friendship. You see what I'm saying? Okay, let me, I'm, I'm losing everybody. Okay, oh my God, you guys are just typing away. Um, Otis is saying, so true. Some people marry because they're afraid there would be no one else. And that's another thing, especially if you um, had a horrible <clears throat> high school experience, you never had a girlfriend, people called you ugly or you was a late bloomer, let's say. Um, called you ugly names, you never date, you didn't go to your prom, blah, 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 blah. So you graduate high school or college or whatever. You could have been that way in college as well. And the first person that shows you any real attention romantically, they think you're cute when no one else has ever had. Let's say your parents called you ugly, your sisters called you ugly, your brothers called you ugly. All your life you've been hearing ugly, ugly, ugly. And this person comes by and say, I think you're cute. I like your laugh. I like your smile. You have attention that you've never had before. That's why I really want to discuss this, y'all. So many... Oh, What happened? Are you serious right now?